when you have a pistol for personal protection, it means you're actually betting your life on it. I mean, that's really what it's all about, isn't it, Jeff? It is, it's something there, it's like a fire extinguisher. It's something that you can take care of a problem immediately because you have it with you. Yeah, exactly, so, all right, I've got a 380 here, you've got a nine millimeter. You could say that both of them are marginal. I mean, the 45 guys will make fun of the nine and the 380, but it's what we carry. So what we need is the best ammo possible, and that's kind of what the whole Honey Badger concept's all about. That, that's right, Tom. Something that's, that's gonna work as well as you can expect with something that you can carry on your person all the time. While touring the factory, I caught up with Justin just to gain a more scientific perspective on the design of the Honey Badger. This is a big 4570, 325 grain Honey Badger. It might be moving at 1800 feet a second. You've got really, really fast moving fluid coming in at this thing or this bullet moving into a fluid medium. That pressure associated, that kinetic energy uh, of the fluid flow, then whenever it hits the front of this bullet, it stagnates. The, the velocity becomes very close to zero and it skyrockets the pressure. When the pressure skyrockets and then it sees these fluted sections around the projectile, which have lower pressure, they are incentivized to move through them very quickly and then whenever they move into the flutes, the flutes propel the fluid up and out of the way radially. So what you get is this wake, this drag, this disturbance, this, uh, this very quick fluid jet movement that creates a lot of disruption outside of the projectile's diameter. And that's the short version of how this works. <laughs> the reason you keep trying to come up with better ammo all the time is because Handguns are really not the best tool to use for self-defense anyway. Handguns are a, a, a substitute. You know, the, there's an old saying, if, if, uh, if I was ex really expecting trouble, I'd have a rifle or a shotgun, and I'd have friends with rifles and shotguns. <laughs> I like that. And bullets have gotten a lot better in, in for handgun calibers since the FBI shooting, so there's been a lot of improvements, and this, this is one of them. Uh, you've got something here that doesn't rely on the hollow point to perform. It used to be the concern about a hollow point is uh, if it w velocity wasn't high enough or if it hit a heavier ba heavy barrier like a leather coat, it would plug shut and not give you good performance. This doesn't rely on a hollow point to perform. So we got a block of gel set up in the range over there. We're gonna go in there, we're gonna shoot nine millimeter, we're gonna shoot 3.8 in it, and we're just gonna take a look at how it really performs. All right, Jeff, see if I can hit this thing. I'm watching, don't let that bother you. I think I hit it. That's good. All right, let's get another pistol. Thank you, sir. Okay, bottom dot. Bottom dot. Okay. All right, Jeff, we got our blocks out here, took a look at them, we injected the die in here. We got 380 on the top and the nine millimeter on the bottom. Tell me what we're looking at for performance. In both instances, Tom, we've got pretty much ideal performance. The FBI recommends 12 to 18 inches. Okay. So here we've got two different cartridges, and if you look at this, penetration-wise, the 380 meets the 12 inch minimum. Yeah, it's almost at 13 inches here for yep. the 380. Okay. And with a good two inch temporary cavity diameter. So you're cutting right. a good wound channel, but you're hitting the area where the FBI recommends as far as being assured you're gonna hit vitals. Okay. On the lower one, we've got the 100 grain nine millimeter uh, honey badger. Right. Right, again, FBI recommends 12 to 18. We're just short of 18 inches, right. so we're staying within their recommendations. We've got a nice wide wound channel. It's two and a half, if we cut that block and measure it exactly, we might hit two and three quarters. So we've got a, a nice wide wound channel and good consistent penetration within the required depth. Well, you know what my takeaway on this is, yes, the honey badger works really well. The other part of it is, if you have good bullets, the 380 is absolutely an effective self-defense tool. It is, the, the, the 380 is a far better self-defense tool with the modern, really good bullets such as the Honey Badger. Right, right. Uh, it, it's no longer a sub-marginal gun. Amazing, and you said that if we had shot like six of these, they'd all be at the same place. That's one of the nice things about the Honey Badger design. It doesn't change shape as you're firing, so you have consistent performance. If we fired five more of each of these, right. it'd look like a little horse race with bullets. Uh, they'd all be crossing the finish line pretty much together within a one-inch band. We've done that repeatedly. Amazing. 
Honey Badger, when you're looking for consistency and dependability, something you can bet your life on.